La entrevista va a ser en inglés, pero sepan que van a tener subtítulos en español para los que lo necesiten. I worked with a guy named Demon Gaggi for a while. It was a lot of fun, and I learned through a lot of mistakes. And he created a vehicle that allowed me to operate in ways that most people don't get to play with or operate in. I mean, find a company that has, you know, 10 to 30 team members and become a have a beginner role at that company. The, the two ways, number one, you can do things the kind of the way I took is that that get you enough respect to be able to work with someone like, of that caliber, or you can get your foot in the door and show your value and your worth and, and, and grow inside of a company to where you become a lifelong soldier that, you know, is working with the generals. Can I ask you what's your content team looks like? Right now, it's just two short form editors. They're great editors. I don't care necessarily about the editing skill as much as I care about their ability to understand what I want in my content. People only engage and follow when they know what they're they should expect. And if you try to mix those into journey and story and, va and, and value all in one, you almost always get a group of people that are not very engaging. I really want to develop critical thinking on people about content and not like structures that are going to be obsolete. Yeah, no, I agree. And structures go out of date quick. Our clients do about $60 million a year. The only industry that outwardly talks about how much money the company makes is info product and agency. And I just think that's a broken mindset when it comes down to it. What number do you think that is like a good percentage of engagement on an Instagram account. But probably anywhere from 10 to 30%. Would you recommend to go to university education or online education? The only reason that I would recommend anyone to go to uni is if they want to be a doctor or be a lawyer. Hello, what's up? I will do my intro in Spanish if you are good with that, so That's people cool. can understand yeah. me. <laughs> Hola, queridos, espero que anden muy bien. Acá Chichito, vamos a entrevistar a Paul Daly. La entrevista va a ser en inglés, pero sepan que van a tener subtítulos en español para los que lo necesiten. So, hey, Paul, how are you? It's a big pleasure to have you here. Okay. This is my first uh, interview in English, so I will be nervous for the whole interview, but it's a big pleasure to have you here. So, I will make a question for your introduction. So who you are and what do you do? I, my name is Paul, I'm in the States. I, I don't know how to answer who I am, but I am, what I do is I am blessed to work with guys like you um, and, and others in helping them grow their businesses. And so I, if, what, if I had a word who I am, I am a, a Christian trying to grow the kingdom of God and doing it through, through the, the vehicle of business. Okay, amazing. But let me ask you in who you are, like the credentials, age, where are you from? <laughs> Why are you doing that? Are you married? Oh, yeah. Are you alone? <laughs> I am turning 30 soon. I'm 29. I am in the States. I'm by DC. I don't talk about personal life. That's the one thing I don't get into on this kind of stuff because there are a lot of, you know, there's some things that you should talk about outwardly and some things you keep, keep inside. Uh, outside of that, I have worked with some of the biggest names in the space, uh, in at least the English speaking space, and some pretty big names in Spanish speaking space uh, as Can well. Can you name one of them, maybe? I was Iman Gadji's CEO uh, and CEO for the last two years. I worked with guys like um, like Jaime Huguera, example given, or or you and uh, Agos. And because of that, I've learned a lot in the experience. In the I've learned a lot, and I have a lot of experience. And all I try to do now is is shed that experience to to others. Okay, amazing. For context for the people, we get to know each other because we were working in your one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And what's the objective of that program? So you can sell yourself right now. <laughs> I don't need to sell myself at all, but <laughs> I know. The, <laughs> the, the goal <clears throat> of that is just to, is to work with really talented guys and helping them grow stuff so that they can make a, an impact in the world. And then Uh, possibly later down the, the line partner with, with some of the best infos in the space. And so my goal is internally in the business, my goal would be to grow a portfolio of amazing info products. Okay, amazing. And how are you doing with that? Can we talk about numbers or maybe later or maybe no? Uh, I don't get into numbers, but we're doing well. I can put it that we're way. Doing well. I can talk about the, the numbers of our clients. I, I aggregated our clients do about $60 million a year, 60 to $70 million a year. Okay. Uh, on the people just on the one-on-one -on -one stuff. And so we do, you know, we take on some of those a, a percentage and, and some of those we get equity in. And it's Are you doing 100K a month? Yeah, that's yeah, 200. That's kind of a uh, easy browner. You, uh, <laughs> I don't know what Salejo is doing here. This might be a mistake, my bad. Sorry about You're that. You're fine, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. I just don't get any numbers. My, my theory or my thought on this is that, you know, most companies, 
in the world don't talk about unless they're public they don't talk about the the size of the company because it's a private company the only reason the public companies do is because they legally have to disclose to the only industry that outwardly talks about how much money the company makes is info product and agency and i just think that's a broken mindset when it comes down to it i don't think that it's it should be something known as to how much your company makes does it make sense as i think it more so matters you know who does your company work with what do they do or do you have a good reputation for for doing good work for uh, sure. and i would ideally speaking <laughs> Ideally speaking, we're a company known for good work. I really don't know what's happening. <laughs> This is strange for me also. It's no Daniel, worries, <laughs> are, they, are they people on your team? No. I don't know who, huh. who they am, who they are. You don't know who they are? No, this is strange, first time. Weird, interesting. Weird for sure. Daniel, te puedes ir por favor? Oh, okay, I can quit them. Remove. Do you do you see Daniel right now? Yes. Okay. Okay. We will need to make that he's not here. I don't know what's happening. I'm really nervous. But let's go. Do you, do you do you? How about this? Do you want to do you want to rain check this and we can just pretend this one's a, a a run through for practice, but then we can do this again on a private league or something. I'm okay, but at the same time, I also on Riverside when we export this, does does it have all three together? Or is it their own no, video files? No, they, they, they are being recorded separately, so there's no no problem. Got it. Uh, we can have, oh. we both, for context cool. for Then we can keep going. Yeah. It, yeah, you, you, you do whatever you're comfortable with, man. Okay, I'm thank easy. you. Thank you, sir, for the... Don't, don't be sorry, it's okay. Issues. But nobody's going to notice in the final version, so we are good to go. Cool. Okay, I have a pretty good question to make you now. Are you ready to go deep in education? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Imagine you have, okay, you were the CEO of the biggest online education business in the world. We can say that. One of them, uh, yeah. One of them, okay, one of the biggest. So right now, if you happen to have a nephew, would you recommend him to go to university education or online education? The only reason that I would recommend anyone to go to uni is if they want to be a doctor or be a lawyer, maybe an engineer, depending on what kind of engineer, but really medicine and, and law are the only things I would ever recommend people take the, the uni route for. And, the route, and when it comes, I'm not necessarily recommend that they take online education yet. There's a lot of people in the online educational world that are scammers, genuinely, to, to use a kind of hot take. But the the majority of learning, I think realistically, when I can, when, if I was to tell someone to, to learn that was close to me and how to do it i would definitely say experiment you know find guys that you think genuinely have good programs and look into it and do due diligence and and 100 i think that by the time that uh, let's say by the time i have a kiddo who's old enough to to invest in a program i'm sure online education will be a lot more normalized and i think it, i won't have to tell them that it's a good route to go down the other thing is i think it's also really good to, to work inside of companies and so i think a really good form of education that's not often talked about is just working inside of a company that's not too corporate not too small but somewhere where you get to work with talented people that know what they're doing and, and consume information that way and then through that you know getting into to to online education you know for for more specific skill sets but 100 if i had to take you know if i had to tell a nephew today like hey go take a a program on how to sell online versus going down to education, it's almost always going to be go go the online route. Okay, but you you said that working in a business is one of the best ways to learn, but most Absolutely. businesses ask for like a, a career to be graduated on something. What you would think so? you recommend to someone that wants to be rich I think or grow as a professional, but doesn't have a university career? Number one is I don't think a lot of, I think the companies that look for experience, if you will, in terms of, you know, what your resume says are companies that probably would want people from college. But I think a lot of the companies that are butting up now, and this will continue if I had to take a, take a guess on trend, they don't care about your degree or your experience and number one okay two things the people that care about experience are people that are hiring for roles that you know you you can't hire a ceo out of the gate or a coo or a director of sales unless you have experience doing that but when i say go learn from a company i mean find a company that has you know 10 to 30 team members and 
become a have a beginner role at that company. That could be a CS role or an SDR role, or you know, these are customer service roles, sales development representative roles. Um, find a role, you know, that's a, a beginner role where you can just consume information and, and learn and be at the bottom of the totem pole. And I think that's a great way to to start in in the world, right? And let's say, example given, you get into the online world as a salesperson, you start and then you're, you're setting. It's, I think it's great at that point to, to get an online program on how, on how to set or how to close to get in a new skill set, you know? And I think a lot of time when you do it that way, you also find out kind of what you need and what skill sets you're lacking and you can find out online education to, to help you with that. Okay, amazing. Nice, I like that. So basically start on the, only, on the business working with small at small charts on big companies or something like that. And exactly. What were your first steps on businesses? Like where you came from? Ask me that more. I don't know how okay. to answer that question. What was your first step in the business ecosystem? It, car dealerships. I was selling at car dealerships and that's where I learned a lot of, you know, how to communicate, if you will. That's where I gained a lot of the thick skin that I have now. And then after that, I got into some boring stuff. And then I got into online world through SaaS. And through SaaS, I stumbled into having a sales consulting business, when, you know, teaching people how to sell. And then I met a client there that ended up becoming a partner for an agency, a marketing agency that I made. And then from there, it messed up a lot, failed forward, and, and found myself leading some pretty big companies and, and working in the last few years with some pretty big names. And so it's just a lot of what I did was either working in a company or or running my own thing really at the end of the, at the end of the day which I guess are the only two options you have you know there's nothing special about me it's just that I I learned a lot I've spent the last 10 years trying to learn rather than trying to to make as much money as I can and because I've learned a lot I think cash has become a, a byproduct of that okay that's a pretty solid answer for my next question That is, what's your purpose? So what, why are you doing the thing you're doing? I mean, my purpose, and this is a newer defined purpose, but my purpose is to grow the kingdom of God through uh, business. And so realistically, most people think about people who grow the kingdom of God as preachers and pastors, people speaking about Christ every day and such. Uh, I am realizing now that some of the best Christians that have grown the kingdom are people in, in random industries. They could be in medicine or in physics or in, you know, in technology, whatever it is. If you just have people growing the kingdom of God inside of church or around, uh, you're missing a lot of the world. And so I want to take my expertise in business and the respect that I, I have earned in the platform I've been given because of business and use it as a, as a way of showing that that respect and, and everything I know is just through the image of God and, and using that to, to grow the kingdom of Christ. Okay. Okay. That's a, what was different? That's different for what I was willing to, to have as an answer, but let me know <laughs> how do you exactly like doing business grow the kingdom of God? Like, if I yeah, can so, touch it, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm really interested in that. And I'm also religious. I'm from a okay. Catholic. But what, okay. and what kind of religious are you into? Um, so I'm, I'm Christian. If you took down what's called denominations of Christianity, you have Catholicism, you have uh, Protestants, Baptists, etc. I'd be what's called a Baptist. And so in short, I really don't believe in religion. I just believe in having a relationship with Christ and reading the word. And then through that being around people of the same, uh, same belief. And so the way that I grow the kingdom of God through business or the way that I'm aiming and wanting to grow the kingdom of God through business is that just like I get to work with you and, be, and like we're on this podcast, I do that and I, I get to work with guys like you and, and have a platform, if you will, that I do because people want to hear what I have to say about business. And, and I can teach people a lot of things through the, the things I've learned and, and done. And the more excelling, the more excelled I am in business and the, and the bigger the, the businesses that I run are, the more of a platform I naturally will have. And Because of, you know, anytime you have a platform, you choose what you get to do with it. And so you'll see a lot of, you know, you look at NBA stars or football stars and how they get into politics or how they get into, you know, um, who, you, whether they're, they're all for climate change or X, Y, Z, et cetera. 
I want to use my platform to talk about the, the, the kingdom of God. I want people to, to see that there's nothing special about me. I'm made in the image of God and everyone is made in the image, image of God. And what he essentially created me in his image of is someone who has the ability to, to do some of the stuff that I do in business. And it's to no avail of my own. It's, it's all, you know, all credit and glory to, to Christ. Okay. Okay. That's amazing. And it's also connected with my next question. That is, I, I'm, I really think that content ma must be connected to your purpose. Because if you Agreed. don't know why you're creating content, then you're going to quit. So you can't make it sustainable. So right now, you're launching your content. What's like the connection with your purpose in your content? If you, well, if you go to my content, if you go to my page right now, you'll see I talk a lot about God and Christ and business. Uh, the only two things I talk about are business and, and in Christ and um, and so I think it's pretty easy the other thing because I, I agree with you realistically if there's no purpose driving you you're going to quit but the other side too is I think that people can see the authenticity of why you're doing what you're doing and trying to talk about what you're talking about and I think people can can see that I'm being very authentic and up upright and, and forward about my intentions about why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm doing and what I'm talking about and, uh, yeah I totally agree with that point you have to have that, that drive and purpose. And I think it's pretty obvious when you look at my stuff as to, to how I connect them. Okay. You have to have, you need to have crystal clear your purpose and you have it. So right now, can you talk to me about your content strategy? Because you're posting content on another account that is not your personal or bigger account. What's your mm -hmm. strategy behind that? Yeah, I, I don't think that short form engagement is I was actually thinking about this. When people follow, and I have uh, like four posts essentially. Right now I'm doing the post. I, of course, don't do the edits or anything like that, but I'm working on the SEO. I want to learn how the SEO works to, to get the virality. So I'm actually doing all the posts. Okay, and but so in the SEO, want... you mean Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, or someone? Correct, is... no, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. When I'm, I'm posting them and doing the captions because I want to understand how to work that that SEO angle. And so I'm playing with it myself. So anyway, number one, I have some posts to do today. But number two is I I think that when people follow for short form content, they're following for value uh, and nuggets of value or, or entertainment. And when people follow uh, my main page, they're following for the journey of what I'm doing and who I am. They're following for the story of Paul versus value from Paul. And so the, the two pages are essentially one is for value one is for if you care about me and who i am and what i'm doing and following me and my journey and because of that people only engage and follow when they know what they're they should expect and if you try to mix those into journey and story and, and and value all in one you almost always get a group of people that are not very engaging right and so if you look at a lot of people who have shorts and and value value posts on their instagram they don't get a lot of engagement or story views or such. And I think realistically what I care about if I'm going to do this is engagement. I don't care necessarily about how many followers I have. I care about how many of those followers actually actually engage with the content that I post, right? And so the the funnel I have, if you will, which is the same funnel some big guys have, Luke Belmar, uh, Iman, uh, even the Tates, et cetera, they do their short form on sister accounts if you will or or feeder accounts and then they have their main pages where they have a majority of their their story and, and that's also where you can you can liquidate more or or use more as a platform to, to get the message of whatever you're trying to get out okay so you were talking about good engagement what number do you think that is a good percentage of engagement on a instagram account Yeah, I think so. My story views, and I think this is a really healthy number, is anywhere from like 40 to, to 50 percent is a good uh, in good percentage for story views. Uh, and then when it comes to actual posts, I'd argue that it depends on how big the account is, but probably anywhere from 10 to 30 percent, depending on how big the account is, what industry you're in, why people are following, etc. The thing is, if you look at people who have short form content and all the value posts on their main account, their engagement typically hovers at one to three percent. And so I'd rather have a smaller group of people that, you know, a third of them are engaging with me or, you know, a, a fifth of them are engaging with me rather than a lot of people that one one hundredth of the people are engaging with me. I'd rather, you know, for every 99 or 100 people I have, 99 won't see my stuff or won't engage with my stuff versus for every 100 I have, 20 to 30 will engage with it. I think I'd rather have the, the latter, even if it's a smaller group of followers. Okay. And your content strategy behind that is based on sales or based on message? 
It's based on business. And so sales is a part of that, operations is a part of that, hiring is a part of that. But I, I, I'm not, a, if anything, the one thing I probably have to focus on is where inside a business do I want to fall? Because business is very broad, it's very general. I'd say if anything, it's online business. But I am very well known for sales because I have a sales program inside of inside of uh, a program called Educate, and so that's definitely been a sub niche that I found myself in, and the content that I have there does very well. Okay, and you right now you have that program inside of Educate. I'm I'm seeing that. So, do you plan to do the same, like to also teach sales on your staff, or you reserve that to Educate? <sighs> I haven't, I haven't thought that far ahead, man, genuinely. And sales so, is not my focus right now. It's not what I, it's not, I will never want to compete nor need to compete nor whatever, call myself a competitor to, to something like, like that company or Iman. Iman's not only a close friend, but he's also on a whole different level than I am. And so even if I wanted to compete, I don't think I'd ever be able to call myself a competitor at the level of business that they're at and, and as smart as Iman is. But on top of that, I would never want to compete with Iman. Okay. Uh, but when it comes to sales specifically, I have no interest right now in creating something on sales. It could be in the horizon down the road if I need something for, you know, if I if I have a, a group of people following me that want that, maybe one day I make it, but it's just not my not it's not my focus right now in life. Okay, amazing. But are you willing to become as big as Simeon and compete like in the good way, not the same product, but are you willing, willing to to be that kind of marketer? I'm I will grow it as, as far as I think God wants me to grow it. And so if that means that I become, which I highly doubt the next Demon Gadji, then that'd be cool. You know, that'd be great if God wants me doing that. If that means that God wants me in a very sub niche group of people and I, I only having, end up having, you know, a very small following, but that's where, that's where Christ wants me. And that's where God thinks I'll make the impact that he wants me to make. I'm happy with that. You know, there's truly way less intent behind my my social run than you would you would think i just want to get i want i want god to decide once what he wants of me and wants from me okay okay and right now you have a second account when you post the value content and what are you posting on your main account like what's the different on like strategy behind that my main there's no strategy behind the main account Okay. The main account is just, you know, stories wise, it'll be about business or if I'm taking on clients or, or such. But when it comes to actual posts, it's kind of like a, a whatever I'm doing in life, you know. So sometimes I won't post for a couple of months. Sometimes I'll post twice in a week. Some, and it's usually about my travels or who I'm, you know, what I'm doing, who I'm working with. And what I l usually try to show in that account is what my life looks like at any given time, you know. And so there's no, but there's no strategy behind that. It just life okay okay and i have a question i know you're looking you're looking for some actionables and i'm sorry i can't give them to you there's a lot of this is just more no, simple no. you know the... I, I i'm not looking for actionables like okay we, in my program or like my, my philosoph philosophy is to develop like thinking and not like i don't know structures of content i want people to really think about how they can do it and personalize it because if you have a structure then the structure will stop working and you are done. But if you know how to think about how to create them, then you will always be accurate. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what my thought is, right? Okay. So I like to, I don't do much sit down stuff right now. The only sit down videos I make are inside of a, a group I have called the Daily Bread. And that's the only stuff I sit down and, and, and do. And I those are very raw videos where I'm just essentially video journaling about what I did that day. Other than that, the the content that I'm getting into is, I it's about, okay, so my, my problem, if you will, is I'm not very creative when it comes to knowing what people want to talk about, right? I do much better in conversation than I do over speaking to a camera uh, about a certain subject. Because of that, the way that I'm approaching content is podcasts, Q and A's, uh, conversations with people that then can be clipped into short form content. Eventually I'll have to do some more long long form stuff and I'll find out what kind of method I want to use for that. But my my philosophy is that if I'm getting on podcasts with people that are in my industry and want to talk about and you know what I want to talk about and know who I am, then the conversations we can get into tend to be pretty valuable for people to listen to and, and we can use that as short form content. And so a lot of the, sh the, the content I'm creating are just based on podcasts. And so one of the things I do a lot of right now is just I had a podcast right before this. I'm just on podcast after podcast. Uh, and that's how I fund my content team, if you will. 
Okay, and are you doing that because it's easy or because you're bad in the other? Um, I, I wouldn't say I'm bad at the other one. I think it's just the way that makes the most sense for me and the skills that I have. I think there are a lot of people that probably would be better at doing sit-down videos rather than podcasts because podcasts, you know, you don't have as much of an opportunity to go back and say the same thing four or five times to get it right, yeah. you know, versus in a sit-down video where you can. And so the you're definitely putting yourself out there a little more in podcasts. I think you have to be a little sharper and, 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 and spoken or at least have higher communication intelligence. Uh, and I just think that plays to who I am better. I also, there's something about the authenticity that I can feel in myself when I speak to someone in a podcast and answer questions versus when I'm sitting down at a camera and trying to talk to somebody that I can't see. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. So the, the words that I was looking about the, the program is I really want to develop critical thinking on people about content and not like structures that are going to be obsolete. So right now, like, if you're talking about your critical thinking, it's much better than giving a structure to this and then to this, that won't work, never. Yeah, no, I agree. And structures got to date quick, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I love what you're saying. I think the, the critical thinking on my end, so that and I would add is probably something you talk about in your philosophy, is that I it's about finding something that works for you right and right now doing a sit down video and planning everything out and, and going through that process isn't something that works in the flow that i have right now for what i need to do in, in business but the the podcast and then creating a short form team that can go through those podcasts and use that for content is something that works very well for the kind of person i am right and so it, the one thing i'd want anyone listening to this to know is what works for me doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you for sure you have like the reputation so people want to listen to you without needing to do hooks <laughs> that's exactly great. yeah i like that <laughs> and can i ask you what's your content team looks like right now it's just two short form editors amazing editors they're great guys i i looked at a lot of people and the thing that i care about most in content is not necessarily they're great editors but i don't care necessarily about the editing skill as much as i care about their ability to understand what I want in my content. There's a critical certain level thinking. of, uh, yeah, critical thinking. There's a certain, it's all about, actually this goes really in well well with what you're trying to say, but I, I want people on my team that can understand what I'm trying to, to tell people and, and teach and, and show that can take a, you know, a big clip, you know, an hour long podcast and bite it into things that actually make sense and get those points across rather than people who can make a really nice edit, but you don't learn anything from what you're watching. And so that's uh, that's what that's what I'm looking for. It's all about critical thinking and and, and competence with with my team. And do you check all your videos? Before I look at every A cut. I look at every A cut, and I'll usually look at the final as well. Because but you the A cut. Them. Correct. Yeah, and eventually I won't look at the finals, but I look at the A cuts because the A cuts tell me the story that that the the video is going to be giving right so when i look at an a cut there's two philosophies i tell my team i need it needs to have one one of two philosophies number one is it has to very clearly talk about a problem and then very clearly define a solution to that problem so that people can watch that and feel i have no idea what just happened there apple has um, oh you can turn that off if you want yeah how do you do that i forgot about that you need to go up in the screen when you have like a green icon with a camera and then reactions, turn it off. I, click oh, I, have, I, have a, I have a yellow microphone, but I don't have a green camera. Interesting. Anyway, I just won't peace sign anymore. Long story short, there are two philosophies that my, my team has to work off. Number one is that they have to either clearly show a problem and clearly show the solution. Or number two is that they have to have a hook that tells a story after that someone can resonate with. Uh, the stories, of course, build the the following of, of who's following me and uh, for what I am and who I stand for. The, the value clips, of course, are what get virality. So the, con the, the story clips, the hooks with stories don't tend to do as well as the value posts, but, the, but they, they engage the audience further. The value posts are what gets in front of people. They, they get a lot of saves, a lot of shares. Those are what people look at as like, I watched this and I feel like I learned something. So I'm going to follow this guy, the story of like hook and then, and then something about me, uh, whether it's a time in my life or something I've gone through, et cetera. Those are things that deepen the relationship of a follower to the creator. In this case, uh, yeah, followers. like story content is very good for nurturing, but the value content or inform information content is very good for reach. Exactly. So you're doing both. Amazing. And 
I had a question. How many posts <laughs> are you doing a day? I have six posts edited a day. I am currently posting three next week. We're, we just launched it this week. So the, the fact, by I the know. way, that we're having, yeah, the fact that we're having a, and they're not, have you seen them? Do you like them so far? Are they good? Yeah, I really like them. Thank you. I, I, I'm really involved in the process because we, when we started working together, you were not doing it. And right now, yes. yes. And I, it's my area. So I really following that. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a, that. I'll take that as a big compliment coming from you. Um, right now we have six, six finals a day created. We are posting three next week. We're switching to four and we'll slowly ramp it up until it's about four or five a day, creating a bank of one or two a day that we're not posting. And then using that as a, as a bank to, to get into, uh, another sister feed. So right now we have one sister, one, one feeder account. If you want to call it a feeder account on Instagram, one feeder on TikTok. the TikTok stuff is not going well because I haven't really focused on that at all, but, the 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 two accounts will eventually become four accounts and and six accounts and and so on. Does that make sense? For sure. If I can, we don't e yeah, we don't even have anything on YouTube Shorts actually. That's something that and or Pinterest. Pinterest Shorts do apparently relatively well too. And so I need to reels also. If you, I, I don't do anything English on Facebook people, yet. Like in the states, who, uh, Facebook is a thing. Not here. Okay. But you should start doing Facebook Reels. Cool. I, so one of the hires I'm making, if we're speaking about team, is I'm trialing them out, but I'm bringing on a full producer who will focus on the redistribution of, of account or content, the scripting. And the uh, CEO. He'll actually do... The CEO. So again, the, the SEO. The SEO. Yep. The SEO. The, uh, even the long form stuff. You'll help me with some long form stuff and, under, and, and you know, taking out the friction of me creating content. I don't want to do long, but you have to do long in order to, to nurture audience, right? Yeah, to, for sure. To, you know, that short form has to go somewhere. Otherwise, you're just someone who, who um, long form is what builds relationship. For sure. And so I don't want to do long because long form is, is, to me, there's a lot of friction of, I don't feel like scripting out videos. I don't know what what concepts and, and topics I need to talk about. And so the producer will do all of that. And so we're trialing them out starting in April in two days, three days. And uh, and then if it goes well, we're bringing them on full time and giving him a uh, profit share agreement and everything. So that's all the redistribution to, to YouTube shorts and Facebook and such and Pinterest. That'll be something that they take over when, uh, when they come in. Amazing. I think that today I'm reaching 10K on YouTube. So maybe later I will say you might win. Yeah, if it awesome. go well today, I'm reaching 10k, and I started on January, so pretty solid, I think. Uh, very well done. The bad. I started on content because of YouTube, so it's a very big win to to me. Good, good for you, man. Congratulations. That's and a big I, one. I want to recommend you that you need to have a producer. That's good, like someone thinking on your content all day long. But also, you need to have someone answering the comments and the DMs, like yeah, Instagram values that if people. Uh, take time on your account and DMs is the bigger thing to do that. I have that. I have that right now, but as that grows, it's going to get a little more complicated. But right now I have, I have two people that handle all the DMs for my main account and then the daily wisdom account. Okay. Amazing. That's the best way to grow on Instagram, like in DMs. And Mosseri said that on a podcast, not me, Mosseri, that is Instagram seal said, say Okay, I'll take that. I'll, I'll I'll focus more on it. I promise. I will send you the the conversation of Mosari. Very good. Thank you. So you can cool. listen to it. So you are selling a high ticket program. Like you are expensive. Yes. Why do you think people trust you? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, yes, you know. <laughs> That's it. No, I don't. Generally, I I I tell people all the time that are around me, like in the car when I'm spending time with people, the I. All the time, I have no idea why people listen to what I say, genuinely. I think if anything, it has to do with the fact that I've done a lot of things on a, you know, on the, like the business bucket list. I've checked a lot of things off and I don't claim to be the, the causer or the causation behind any of them, but by being in certain experienced experiences or situations, you learn a lot. And then through that, you know, through those learnings, uh, the guys that I've worked with have, have wanted other guys or told other guys it's it's almost like spreads like wildfire when someone kind of knows how to how to help people that spreads like wildfire very well right so, so that's I think, social proof like social proof. yes somebody my internal social proof via referrals is great right now the social proof on social media is what i have to work on okay okay so you need to communicate that social proof yeah but i i don't know you know the other thing <clears> is dude i i just 
I don't feel um, humble or meek when I do that. I feel pretentious and cocky and and such. And so realistically, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Social proof has never been something that comes naturally to me, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad. But thing. you can do it without like gelling it. Like for example, if you in your examples you talk about working with that big name, that big name, and you use them like to tell a his story, that's social proof without saying this is uh, Adidas work with me because I'm the best one. Like not doing that. Or maybe, I, I see what you mean. I, it's something I got to get better at for sure. Okay, I'm developing like I just a, don't... A, a communication theory with a professor at my university, like talking about reputation, online reputation, and like the three pillars of reputation online are authority, that is your results, social proof, that is your brand like vinculation, and then uh, the last one is experience, that is the time you've been in the business. So you work with big clients, social proof, you have results, for you and for your clients, authority, and then you have long time in the business, like you are not a trend. So then if you are good communicating that without gelling it, you will be fully respected. And you have it, but you don't do it in purpose. If you... Yeah, I think, you know, to an extent, it's, I think when you talk about your successes rather than other people talking about your successes for you, there's just a certain level of, of, There's something about it that I just don't love doing or love. And so I, 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 I actually genuinely agree with the theory that you're going over with your, with your professor. I think those are the three fundamentals. But I also think that the one intangible is whether or not I talk about who I've worked with or what I've done or how much money I've made. I think that for a lot of the subjects I cover, people can just see that I know what I'm talking about. And I think that it is the one intangible... You. No, I, I would argue that some people who don't know me still see that I, you know, that I can speak about things in ways that a lot of other people can't or won't or don't know how. And because of that, I think that's the, that's the one intangible that allows me or might allow me. You, I might come back in three months and be like, bro, you were right. <laughs> I, I tried it my way. It did not work. Uh, or in three months, I, I might say the one thing I have going for me is that because of my experience, people see that when I talk about something, it is different than a lot of how other people talk about The, the same thing and because of that that's what allowed me to grow without having to leverage names or or money or or anything like that okay that's amazing yeah the other thing is volume too if i put out you know if i get to a point where i'm putting out 20 shorts a day which i will get to it's hard not to succeed when you're putting out you know 100 shorts a, a week 400 shorts a month cross-platform that's going to be a lot of use you know And last year with agus on our best days we were posting 20 videos a day, so it will be 20 shorts, 20 reels, and 20 TikToks. We were posting 1,800 videos a month, and we got wow. we get to know like millions of people a day. That was amazing. Yeah, that's that's what I think realistically. Out the volume of which I want to get to, whether or not they stick and become followers and engagers, of course, is the con the quality of 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 who you are, what you've done, and, and just like you said, those three pillars. I will see if I'm going to see before I get into those three pillars, if I can use the intangible of like, okay, do I have enough oomph in what I say to, to allow people to, to want to follow me without having to flex about. But you're much. in a better position because we were building the trust with the content. You That's have true. the trust and you need to communicate the, the, with the content. So you're in That's the true. good way of the moon. Yeah. I'm, most I'm, people go content con, in, in the content industry. Most people are content first, business second. I'm coming in from the opposite, where it's business first, content second. Yeah, that's amazing. Can I make your recommendation for your content? Please. When I ask you a question, so you can you can avoid using me in your content, so you can like have the main focus. You can recover the question, so you can use it as a hook. For example, if I ask you how much money do you make a month, instead of saying 10 million, say. I make 10 million a month. So if you recover the question, then you don't need to use me. I, but I, I think people like it when there's a question inside of it. I was actually talking to my team about this today. When, I, you, know, when you crop out the question, I understand where you're coming in on it for it, but I think people naturally, that I actually 
had this exact meeting today, so I'll tell you exactly what I told my team. For sure. I think, and I'm not sure on this, but I think the psychology of how humans would work would be that if you hear a question that you resonate with, or if you hear a question that piques your curiosity, even if you don't know who's answering it, you're gonna watch the the answer to the question. And so I personally like having questions and or questions start my short form content. You're gonna see a lot more of that. So I, I, I would ideally, and if we're on a podcast, I'm sure you're okay being in the content, right? For sure. And so ideally speaking, I would like to have you on your, as in your face asking a question that I will then answer on my shorts. I think that's a, you know, at least that's more natural to what I like and what I think. And I'm, I'm ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But for example, I'm a, a small fish compared to you. And if you want to use your repetition, because when you saw the reel, like I recognize this guy, people will recognize you more than me. That's true. So like the, the, the social proof is smaller because That's, people don't. Well, you could, you could always me. have me be the, the video that people see, but the question be the audio. Yeah. You know, that will be great. So there, there are ways around it for sure. Or maybe I, I totally agree. Mid screen will be great also. Yeah. That too. You know, you yeah. can do that. All that. I'll be honest. All that stuff is, oh, we'll test it. We'll see what works. We'll see what doesn't. But, uh, the, the only preface or the only thing I care about in the content, the only thing I look at is, is there a problem and a solution that gives people value when they watch that, that clip? Or is there a story that people will get to know me more with? Okay, amazing. And I also would recommend if you want to do it on a podcast, then you need to get to use to talk using like small hooks. For example, I noticed I one on the that. other reel. Like, I think this, this is the first time I say this, like that's a micro hook on inside of the content. So you, you get to people who I, I agree that I need to become more conscious about how to turn podcasts into short form it's definitely something that that i can get better at but at the same time oh man i i it there it's a skill set I, I i won't disagree i won't disagree that i need to get better at that okay. but i, I want to stay authentic to it too is it's okay also but you get you get used to it and for example saying the hook on the last uh, sentence and then your team could put it first because when you like finish answering you know what you say and then you can do the hook like last and then you put it first that's really good and it's easier you know when you stop like answering i from a, a content perspective you're not wrong in the slightest i can't disagree with that um yeah, i gotta get better at i gotta get better at speaking on podcasts it's actually something i i look back at every podcast and i, I see what i you know what did i say that i think i could have worded differently that i shouldn't have said etc but the hooks during during my speak my speaking is definitely something I gotta get better at, for sure. But you're really good at speaking. Like you have crutches, Thank you. you don't have them, and you answer really straightforward, like and fast, without like dabbing in the in the in the middle. Thank you. Can we you talk about? You compliment me too much. Sorry. <laughs> you compliment me too much. I know. No, you flatter me. But we because we get to know each other. Yeah, we've we've, we've done some cool stuff together at this point. So can we talk about your relationship with the big name? Or oh, that's not allowed? How do what you, you want to know? <laughs> how do you get to work with him? Like, how do you know him? So, yeah, Iman, we can, we, you know, it's not like we can't say his name, but I worked with a guy named Iman Gaji for a while, uh, for two years, and uh, nothing but amazing things to say about Iman. Genuinely a great guy. And he's obviously had a lot of success. I don't claim to be any reason toward that success, but what I do claim is that I learned a lot through it. And so when you work with a company like he built and, and like we, we built together, I do, uh, I'll take a percent of the success, if you will, or half a percent or something. Okay. I, I was, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I learned through a lot of mistakes and, and he, gave, he created a vehicle that allowed me to, to operate in ways that most people don't get to play with or operate in. And because of that, I, you know, that's what I have to share now. But I worked with him for a long time and he was originally looking for a sales manager. This is after I had sold my marketing agency. And so at the time his his offer and his his brand was about marketing agencies. And so it was kind of aligned that I had just sold a marketing agency. I was good at teaching sales. I was good at sales. And he was looking for a sales manager for a marketing agency info product. And when I got into that, uh, the the rest of the, the two years was just a lot of fun and we grew really well. And so if you want to work with someone like that, there are two ways. Number one, if you want to work more intimately with them, you have to be someone who can offer them a value, right? 
So what value do you offer to, to people that have, that have growth like that? Uh, the other way is you can get yourself into the, you know, the, the current COO of that company was someone who came in as a setter and just showed immense value to that company. He's incredibly smart. He's one of my, he's one of my favorite people in the world. He's, so, he's so talented, good guy, honorable dude. Uh, and you know, he got his foot in the door and just made his way and, and, and cleared a path to, to growth. And so the, the two ways, number one, you can do things the kind of the way I took is that, that get you enough respect to be able to work with someone like, of that caliber, or you can get your foot in the door and, and, and show your value and your worth and, and, and grow inside of a company to where you become a lifelong soldier that, uh, that, you know, is working with the generals. Okay. Amazing. But like exactly how do you know him? Like LinkedIn, IG, Instagram, just, yeah. Instagram. Instagram. He put something on his Instagram story and I replied and that's how the conversation started. Okay. Amazing. So your personal brand take you there. No, this is, yeah, I mean, I mean you're, not the you're, social you're, personal brand, but yeah. your personal to brand. To an extent, yeah, exactly. The, the, the social proof to go back to your wording of what I had done in the space already was enough to, to help me warrant that position. Okay. And regarding to that, what's your most valuable WhatsApp content, contact? My, my, my most valuable WhatsApp contact? Yeah. Wow, that's a question I've never been asked before. Amazing. Well, define valuable. Is it my definition of valuable? Yeah, or is your it just. For sure. And your mom or wife can't be the answer. I'd probably say it's my pastor. You know, when I'm, when I'm dealing with something of, of conflict or challenge, the first person I message is my pastor. And so, in what I find valuable is how to navigate life in a way that is being as Christ like or Christian as possible. And my, my pastor is not only a very close friend of mine, uh, he's one of my best friends, uh, but he's someone that I, I trust and find a lot of value in, in the words that he says and the, the advice that he gives. And so I'd say that he's probably my most valuable WhatsApp contact for what most people in the world would look at. Okay, um, money related? <laughs> money related. I, it depends, realistically. You know, value is only found in, in, in how you can extract it. And so it's not, like, it's not like I can reach out and start something with everybody at any given time, but you know um i got i got some pretty big names in my my whatsapp list i was you know uh, some some guys that if they're not at a b will be at a b, a b soon and uh you know likewise kind of thing so a b means I, a billion yeah. yeah i got some if not billionaires soon to be billionaires in the whatsapp that have, and maybe some you know, names one of them uh man uh, the thing is a lot of those guys just it's not like they're i'm not allowed to it's just that it's one of those things of this is the whole going back to the whole social proof thing and talking about the fact that I, that I don't like to say i work with x y and z people a lot of those guys also just like the privacy i also don't like it when people talk about the fact that they're very close with me and and, and talk to me quite often but um an example would be yesterday i had um I had I mean, Sam it, on this conversation you tell me about some people that you're yeah. very close so, to so, I mean, obviously, Iman's still on my WhatsApp, and Iman would be considered by most a very valuable contact. Yesterday, I had a call with Sam Ovens. Um, Sam is the founder of School, school.com. I don't know if you know School. Sure. And I'm sure he'll be a billionaire soon. The, the company's growing crazy. And so there's a couple of guys that are, I don't want to say by any means that I can just reach out whenever I want and have them reply in a second, uh, you know, but there's a, a couple of guys I've gotten to grow some relationships with uh, that are, yeah, okay. bigger, bigger names. And I'm fine. I find I'm fine with that answer. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about about the free ends of the power. I really like that concept. I like explain it to some of my like clients, and they really like it. So I will want to have it on your own words, so people can understand the free ends concept. Money mastery and mating. Yeah. So firstly, I don't want to take credit for this concept. This is Ty Lopez's concept. I don't know if he takes credit for it or if he passes the credit off to someone else. But Ty taught me this. But most people are driven by one of three things in the world of life and business. That is money, mastery, or mating. Uh, money is obvious. There are people who are financially 
focused on on just making money that uh, their focus in business is just make to make as much money as you can i would argue that this is actually a lot less than you you would think this is normally what starts people out there it's almost like you can look at phases of ownership and 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 career and and see where people would naturally be in their timeline of being a, a business owner but most people start in business because they want to be someone who makes a, a fuck ton of money or they want to get girls and they want to become someone who is capable of getting girls that would be mating right and so you'll still see people who go really far in business and their driving factor is that they want to get more clout if you will and be able to you know like create more of a lifestyle that allows them to get more girls but money mastery and mating most people start out because of money uh phase two or mating phase two is that you tend to see people switch into either money still being their driving force or mastery. So I'm a mastery focused person. The, the question that was asked to me to kind of understand this is, would I rather be someone who is well known and well respected for what I do and only be able to make $100,000 a year or would I rather make $10 million a year but no one respects me necessarily in the business space? I'd rather make 100K a year but people know I'm good at what I do. In the business space or like general people? It doesn't matter in, doesn't in matter. general, okay. you know, it doesn't matter. Like, do you, do you care about knowing and other people knowing that you're good at what you do or do you not give a shit about what other people think and you just want to make a fuck ton of money, you know? And so realistically, the, the reason that I, you know, I got death before dishonor tattooed here with a, a buddy of mine and the, the reason to an extent I, I would always choose the honorable thing in business beside the fact that it feels right, beside the fact that it's it's what God would want me to do and it's the impulse I have is always to do the honorable thing. The other side to it is I don't think you can be someone who masters what they do if you're doing dishonorable things. I don't think anyone would look at a scammer in the online industry and be like, wow, that guy knows what he's doing. You know, I just, I, I, I don't think people will look at that as a, a master of craft. And so I, I am driven personally by mastery. I would rather people know that I'm good at what I do and not make a lot of money than vice versa. And so uh, because of that, that's also the nat natural inclination I have toward teaching. I, I like to teach and, and consult and work with people because it's a form of, of me helping perfect my mastery. The, you know, when you when I talk about different things to different people and I have to verbiate things in different ways so that they can understand it or use different analogies, uh, sometimes I have things click in my brain that I haven't realized. And sometimes I learn stuff through that and it gets me better at my skill. It's also why uh, with what I'm currently doing, I'm, I work with other people, but I'm also launching my own things so that I can keep doing what I'm good at rather than just talking about it because I always want to make sure I'm, perf I'm getting better at my skill set, right? And so uh, the three M's, money, mastery, and mating, you really have to understand them, not only for yourself, but as a business person because it allows you to understand what drives people and how you need to work with different people, right? And how you incentivize people. And so when you're getting into business with somebody, are they money focused? Are they, are they mating focused? Are they mastery focused? How is that going to impact how your, how your relationship is with them and how you, how you work with them? If you're, you know, working with a closer and they're not money focused, they're mating focused, you might be better off compensating them, not compensating, but bonusing them on, on, on different things that allow them to meet more than to, to make more money, right? And so there are different ways to, to leverage understanding that to grow in business and grow yourself. Amazing. That's a really solid answer. I, I really, like really taking in consideration for hiring people, what's your purpose in life? And if me as a boss, can like make them nearer to that. So that's like the number one question I always ask that what are you willing to do in life? Can I make you nearer? And that's like the free ends defined on a sentence. I love it. It's awesome. Some wise words from Ty Lopez. Okay, amazing. And that's, Ty Lopez isn't your WhatsApp content the best one? Maybe. Ty's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Okay, I don't, I don't want to know what's enormous. Is that a pretty big? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is separating the, separating you from making a million dollars a month? Uh, you know, realistic. That's my barometer. That's where I want to, I want to get to, and. Um, I don't think right now it's a lack of knowledge. I think it's a lack of, of number one, just output. You know, I'm, I'm not working at the same amount of efficient output that a 10 million per month, 20 million dollar per month business would. Uh, 
So a lot of it is just, to be straight with you, a lot of it's time too. You have to remember, I just started this whole new thing that I work with you on two and a half months ago or so, three months ago. And it's doing really well. It's doing bigger than, it's it's bigger than any business I started a couple years ago after a year of, of running some of the businesses I was running. This is already bigger, you know, it was bigger a month in. And so uh, a lot of it is just time and and awareness and growth and just, you know, letting, I know it sounds crazy, but letting time do its thing. You know, it's, I, I can't post a thousand short form posts in a day. I can post those over months, I can, or, or weeks. I can't, you know, take a hundred calls a day. We and our, our team can, and there are different ways, of course, with manpower and, and and hiring people and such that you can get there. But I'm not in a rush right now. I think that's the best thing I have going for me when it comes down to it. I want to I want to build the fundamentals and, and the skeleton of the company that that can handle a million dollars a month. But I'm not in a rush to get there. I just want to know that every day. My my principle as to how we build the company is that every day I want the company to look different based on what we built that day. That makes the company look different. So did we build assets? Did we build something that day that makes the company worth more in the future or able to collect more in the future? Uh, and as long as I'm doing that, I'm happy. Uh, you know, realistically, what I've learned is that money is. I've talked to you guys about metrics and KPIs. You have leading and lagging metrics, and cash collected is a lagging metric to the work that you put in days, weeks, months, years before. before. So um, I don't think too much separates me right now from a million dollars a month. I think, uh, I think realistically, I just got to let time do its thing. And do you have a prediction on time or not? No, I don't want to put a prediction on time because number one, I'm, I'm probably going to get there faster than I could ever predict. And number two is that uh, God has, you know, God has taught me in the past that anything I predict almost always never happens compared to what he wants me to you know, to do. And so who knows, bro, there's a solid chance that in six months I become a pastor and drop everything in business. And you know, <laughs> that's I, whatever God calls me for, that's what I'm going to do. But if it's, I think it's business and I think it's going to stay this way for a long time. And as long as it is, then, uh, then I'm, I'm just going to grow as hard as I can. I, what I can promise you, I can't predict anything, but what I can promise is that every single day I am growing the business to be something that I eventually can do $10 million a month. Uh, and and I'm growing the, the the assets and the fundamentals and the skeleton needed for that to happen, the foundation for that to happen. Okay, okay. Going back to the content side, what do you think the IG stories role in a business is? I think IG stories are where you liquidate. You know, I generally think that that is where you whether and liquidation doesn't always mean CTAs to make money. But even if it's hiring, you know, I think you're going to be better off if you, how about this? IG stories are, is where you direct traffic. And so once you start to get people who follow you, who want to engage with you, who want to buy from you or work with you or collaborate with you or whatever be it, IG stories are how you give them the opportunity to do that, right? And so you CTA, I'm looking for X hire or, hey, I'm looking to get on podcasts. Hey, I'm looking I'm, a CTA that I'm putting out probably today is that I'm going to be in different cities over the next couple of weeks on the East Coast of the U.S. doing a couple more podcasts. And if you're in those cities and you want to connect, send me a DM. Right. Uh, and so it's how you direct people to engage with them further, whether that is, uh, you know, a lot of people would see it CTAs or how you make money and, and get people to buy your program or get on sales calls. That's obviously one of the directions that you can take. But there are so many different ways to direct people. And I think actually being creative and, and, and doing a very, you know, not always doing the same thing, but, you know, having a very almost you almost want to make sure your stories invoke curiosity when people see that little red circle around your profile you don't want them to think every time that they're just going to be cta right so if you like we talked about bastion slot once and i think bastion's a genius and a great guy but if you look at his story and you know if you look if you see he has a story you almost always assume it's going to be testimonial student wins and then some cta at the end right and so i would say that a lot of people might not even tap that because they just don't feel like seeing it i want to have uh, a presence online where when you see that I have a story, you have no idea what I'm putting a story up about. There's so many different things I could be talking about and that I talk about that you're curious just to see. And I think curiosity is one of the most powerful uh, provokers in business or po most powerful emotions in business that you can provoke from people to, to do really cool things. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. And um you well, still nervous, by the way? I know you said at the, be at the beginning you were feeling a little nervous. I'm not that nervous, but I'm thinking. Cool. Like, I'm thinking when you speak, and I need to think Spanish and then translate. And translate so it. That's fair. That's lower. Sometimes I, I, 
think in English, but when I'm thinking <laughs> about your answer, what I'm thinking on the next question, it's a slower. But That's I, fair. I'm, not, I'm not nervous. I'm, I'm pretty sorry. My English is going slower, but I'm not nervous. So thank you for ask, asking. Of course. I will be glad to ask you, regarding to the purpose and the expanding the kingdom of God, I want to know if you have, like, in the business side, an epiphany or a aha moment when you recon recognize that. Yeah, I did. It was I was in a small group uh, for my church. So every Thursday night we have small groups or Wednesday nights I, I do a Thursday night. And so it's just a group of people. And specifically right now in church, this is actually more recent too. This is like a couple months ago, but probably a month and a half ago. And we are going through Genesis. So the book of Genesis and in short, the, the very first part of Genesis talks about man's mission, which is to grow the kingdom of God. God tells Adam to, uh, to grow and subdue the, the wilderness outside of the Garden of, of, of Eden. And so, um, long story short, we were talking about how that is man's mission and how the question in small group was, how do we do that through what we do? And I realized that I, everyone that knew me personally in business knew that I was a Christian. It's something that, you know, every time we have a call, I'll talk about the fact that, you know, I'll use analogies quite often and I'll talk about Christianity quite often. And so anyone who knows me personally knows that. But I realized that here I am, I'm, st I'm starting to slowly bro grow a, a brand online and no one on my, no one online would know that. And that's kind of when I realized that God was putting me in this position to work with people and 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 allow you know allow them to to respect to an extent what I say and there was a somewhat sense of authority with with how I um, spoke about things and uh, he was putting me in position to do this and so that's literally when I made an I, actual written down mission statement to essentially uh, I'm going to paraphrase if I paraphrase it but use the kingdom I'm, I'm sorry use my experience in business and the authority uh, uh, I gain in business as a means to an end to grow the kingdom of God. So most people grow in business because they want to grow their businesses. I grow in business because I think it's a, a way of me putting myself on a higher platform that I can then use to, to shout to the crowd that it all is in the image of God. Okay. I know that our conversation is higher than the question I, I'm going to make, but okay. I also know that all the audience is thinking about that. So are you donating money to the church? 10% of every dollar. 10% of every dollar. Okay. I yep. know that Top line. growing the, the kingdom is more than donating, but people were <laughs> yep. thinking on that. It's okay. Yeah. 10% of every single dollar before tax is, is tithe to Before to tax, church. not after before tax. tax. Before tax, before employees. God, uh, I forget who taught me this, and I, I should know the scripture on this, but God is the first person we pay. So for every dollar, you know, I look at it as we're stewarding God's money. God gives us opportunity and every dollar is his. And so uh, he's the first person paid. We pay him before we pay the government. We pay him before we pay team members, myself, et cetera. Uh, everyone in the company knows it. Uh, God is the first person paid on every dollar. Amazing. Do you have a salary or a percentage? How do you manage like personal Me, money with... Yeah, personal money with yeah, business money. Uh, I yeah, I have a. <laughs> this is a very different kind of question than everything we're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, I have an S corp, so I pay myself. Uh, I have profit share. So I have a holdings company. Let's call it up here, holdings company, and then I have. I don't want these balloons to pop off or anything. And then I have a couple of different companies down here. Most of the companies down here have operators that have something in, in the business percentage wise. And so example given partner and scale, which is, you know, you know Justin example. Justin has a percentage of the business and he gets a salary every month. And then I get a salary in that business for operating in that business as well. And then out of the profit made in the business, we take half the profit monthly and pay ourselves the the equal um or the the applicable percentage of what he gets and what I get. And so let's say we profit there's just say $100,000 in a month after tithing and after costs and after salaries and such. If we profit 100 grand a month, then 50 grand would be paid out to Justin and I, to our percentages. Uh, 50 grand stays in the account for, for growing the rainy day, if you will. And then uh, quarterly, that is also dumped out with a, a certain reserve staying in. And then the 
the salaries are allow allow us to to S corp, if you will, so that we're taxed differently than if we if we didn't. It's that that should change based on any country that everyone's in, and 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 how you know talk to someone who knows about money and such. I'm not an accountant. I'm not saying you should do it my way, but that's how we do it. We do the same, so that's fine. I, I like it. <laughs> cool. And let me ask you. Tell me. I won't ask you. I want you to tell me the crazy mm -hmm. story you have with a client. The craziest. <sighs> With the new business or just in general, like throughout? General. Hmm. Like you end up on a 5 a.m. on a party on another country, something like that. I don't know. If, I don't know if I have a a good. I don't. I don't think I have a crazy story yet. I've been with real estate and my marketing agency for real estate. I can probably think of one or two. I had a, a client who. I didn't, I didn't know this when we brought him on and the closer didn't know this, but he had only sold one house in three years of, of working full-time in real estate. And the one house he had sold was to a family member. And so he had never sold a house to anyone in three years of full-time real estate work to anyone outside of his family in, in which he sold one, one house to a family member. And we worked with him for six months and every month he was happy. He would talk to our team, et cetera. And after six months, he asked for every single dollar he had ever paid back. Um, and we were kind of confused because he had been happy the entire time. And long story short, he said, he, long story short, he, he went crazy on us. And I, I did not, to be transparent with you, I did not refund him because we did everything we were supposed to do and, and more. And he had been happy the entire time. And then it got, it got into a little bit of a, a social battle and, and such. And that was probably the craziest thing that ever happened. I haven't talked about that ever. But like that he is, went crazy, know, been, but he was making money yeah. with the service. He didn't make money in general with his entire company. Uh, and if there's anything that would have helped him, it would have been it would have been us. We gave him. We worked with three other area, or three other agents in the same area esque, and they all did really well. It was just him, uh, and it's because I don't think he was a good business person at the end of the day. Um, but I didn't know that. I only talked to him a handful of times. Probably doesn't. It's probably not the best story, if you will. But I just. I've gotten really good. The clients that I work with now, they're handpicked. You know, we don't take anyone on that. I the, you, I work with you guys intimately, you know, and I work with everyone that we work with intimately. And so I don't bring on clients anymore that I haven't for a long time that I thought would be people I don't want to talk to or, or work with or that I think would end up being crazy stories. So I've, I'm kind of lucky. My life is pretty blessed at the moment. Okay, amazing. That's fair. I was hoping something with... I don't know. Car I, is I would love to give like you that. something crazy, and you know, yeah, someone blew up my car, and this. I would love to give you a crazy story. I just don't have any. Okay, for example, I I was working with the brand manager of Adidas, going to a festival with with the brand, and we crash, like we get in the crash, Damn. and the the girl I was working for, like was 40 and I was 19, and oh. she she started like asking me what to do. And I, I, no, I was 18. I don't even have a, a driving li license. And he, she expected me to tell her what to do. <laughs> and it was an act. Yeah. <laughs> that that's was not like ideal. Crazy. That, that's, that, yeah, that's, I don't have anything like that. Yeah. Okay, no problem. That's crazy. What do you have that people or your following wants? I think I just have lessons of of business and life learned that you know they want wisdom on, and so I think if anything, there's some wisdom that I've gained that they wanna they wanna extract. I think that's okay. the main thing. Yeah. Okay. I I got boring answers for you today, man. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I I want the, yeah. the true answer, not the crazy answer. Cool. And why do you create content? Like, really deep. Why do you create content? Yeah. I, I create content because I've been the if you know you know guy for a long time and realistically for me to grow the kingdom of God I can I can do that with in, intimately with the people I work with and the the clients I have and such but if I really actually commit myself to that mission that means that I have to be in front of more people and I create content specifically so I can get in front of more people so I can do that and then of course selfishly so I can grow the businesses that I have I think the more you grow on content the easier it is to to grow businesses And so those would be the, the two reasons that I, that I get into the content world. Like leverage. leverage. Like the same message yeah. could Le be reach more people. Exactly. Okay. So do you 
associate growing your audience to growing the business. Like it's the same. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. I think there'd be a direct correlation. Okay. Amazing. That's good. And I, I, I was pretty surprised that you are willing to do long form because like a month ago you were really, really against that. I am not, I am not a long form. <sighs> But you're a long I think form. What's... This is long form and you are comfort and you are like willing to have more broadcast, but not the long form, like talking to the camera like that. I don't, I don't. I, I'm with you. I think what's gotten, what's changed my, my pace on that is that Daily Bread Slack channel. And so for those that don't know, I have a, a Slack channel that I put a video in every single day. And I don't know if you're in there, but the, the videos are 20 to 40 minutes long. Sometimes they're 50 minutes long. And it's just me speaking to a camera or screen sharing and going over stuff. And as I've done that, I've had this thought of like, if I'm going to do it, then you know, why not do it in a way that gets more views and, and nurtures to people outside? I'll never do it in that same format because that daily bread format I like a lot. It's just my journal. I just talk about what I'm working on that day. It's very intimate, but uh, I've gained the skill. And then if I have a producer who tells me what to go over and, and kind of what, what he thinks would, would do well if I shared, then it takes the friction away from getting into the long form. And the whole, the only thing about long form is I feel like when you get into long form status you, or stuff, you get into like guru status. And I just don't want to ever play with guru status. It's not the the kind of, you know, it's not the kind of person I want to, I want to associate with or be. And so I'm just, uh, it's, it's a limiting belief. I'm just still a little nervous about long form, if you will. And I had to ask if you are, do you, do you enjoy conversations? You enjoy? podcast I, i love conversations yeah why Generally. don't you start start a podcast like interview people and that way you can create long form nurture i know that you won't have the same reach but it's long form you know that's a great question someone asked me this the other day off a podcast and i think it's two sides number one is i don't have i don't have any interest in starting a podcast right now Genuinely, you know, it's just okay. not the I don't, something about it doesn't seem like something I don't mind traveling and guesting and, and being on podcasts and, and saying like, hey, I'll talk to you for an hour and we'll have a good conversation. I get the content after as well as you do. And then I get to have my short form team go through it. But having the having being the interviewer, not the interviewee and being, you know, being the host and having to to structure that so that because the other thing is i think to be a, a good podcast host you have to research your guest and you have to understand what they what they know and what they say and what they you know what they go over and and there's there's a lot to being a good host i genuinely think if you like the best podcast in the world they're pretty much businesses on their own and there's so much r&d and stuff and of course you can have people do that for you i just don't feel like doing all that right now i don't feel like building all that out and and, and having podcasts genuinely and you get less content because interviewer role is to ask questions not to answer true true i haven't thought about that all i know is that it just doesn't appease me it's not something that i'm like i need to do that if it ever switches to okay that's what i think i need to do then i promise you i'll get into it and i'll do it to the best of my ability but right now just nothing's pulling me to that okay i think that joe rogan says an interview needs to be 80 guest 20 interviewer yeah that's the same thing i would say in sales calls 20% you speaking or, or asking questions and 80% the prospect speaking. So it's a good, Arito. it's a good ratio. Yeah. Yep. And um, okay. Do you think that there is any chance you quit? Like you sell the company, you get the money and you go to the Bahamas to enjoy life? No, I don't think, I think I get bored. I'm a, I'm a builder. I love I, could, I don't think I could retire for the rest of my life and still live the way I want to, but I could go away for a long, long time and be okay. And I just don't think I would enjoy it. I think I get bored. I think I'd, there's a few things. Number one is I think I, could, I'm, you know, I think I need to be a role model to a lot of people right now in my life. And I think that the kind of role model I want to be is someone who, again, works toward that mission that God gave Adam, which is growing the, king, the kingdom of God and, and being excellent at the craft that you choose to do that with. So I think it's a, a little bit of that, but I also just love building. I love, I, got, I come to the office every day and I'm so excited to, to build and, and, and work at what I get to work at. And I love having days where I don't work here and there, but I can tell you that anytime I have two or three days where I'm not working, I feel like I'm rotting away after two or three days. I need, I need this. This is a purpose that, uh, that I feel very convicted about right now. And so I don't see that changing. 
okay and how do you manage that if you want no, no i won't do the the question because you said that you want want to personally so i won't do the answer <laughs> the question sorry okay appreciate <laughs> i i will do it but when we finish recording cool 10 for okay so that's all for my end it's been a been a big pleasure having you here and sharing your your vision of the world and your content and your value and all of that thank you for being so transparent because you told us about your strategy and a lot of things and if you had anything to say to my audience or to someone that is listening to this i have a, a last question okay a lot of people want to be like you like they're i don't, I don't mean that like you you but mm -hmm. be in the place that you are what would you recommend on the mindset side for them to like be near be patient you know uh accept failure i uh, the thing is that i'm at where i'm at now and i have the mindset i have now and the the success i have now because i have failed more times than people will ever try things and so i uh i've taken a lot of beatings i've had a lot of sleepless nights i've had a lot of eviction notices left on the door and you know how do i pay team this month and stress that you know will make people pull hair out i've gone through a lot of that and so realistically when you're when you're accepting of under of the you know when you're accepting that number one it takes a lot of time and tribulation and then failing forward then then i think you're on a good route so i think I think that mental map is 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 probably the most important to have. Just time and failure forward is is probably what I would tell people. Amazing. Cool. Okay. Thank you for having me on, man. Uh, and what I would tell your audience, because you you were asking, what it, is there anything I would say is that if they're listening to you, they're in good hands. Genuinely. Thank you really much. Okay, so that's all for my end. Last qu last word. Cool. Thank you for having me. Genuinely, it's all all on my end. It was fun. Let's go. So you need to like this for the last screen. Let's go. Oh, wait, a flex? If we're flexing, let me do it with this one. Okay. With the whale. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will take a picture and then we end up. We cool. can do the flexing. Do you like? Let's go. <laughs> okay, I will end the recording. All right, bro, I appreciate you. you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>